I'd like to put in perspective what Marsha has accomplished. It all started with an idea, the idea for a patient organization, a national patient organization. It was a radical idea, and it was especially radical uh, for Marcia because she had no experience, she had no staff, she had no office, and she had no money. Just an idea and determination. The early years were not easy. We had the inevitable growing pains, a steep learning curve, the frustrations of turnover and volunteers. Mistakes were made and tears were shed. But Marcia learned from these experiences and continued to grow as an administrator and as a leader. I can remember our first milestone. It was an office. We had our first office and it was a big deal. We had, it had, it was small and it had a window it had a uh, desk. We had a volunteer on a part-time basis. But what I remember most is it was full of boxes. It was full of boxes that came from Marsh's basement. There were other milestones. Our first full-time employee. That was a big deal. Our first executive director, we were uh, organized differently at that time. That was a big deal. There were other milestones, of course, after that, and they were all big deals. And in time, IDF matured, it prospered, and it grew to the extent that following Marsha's example and her lead, I thought that there was an international application for the IDF concept. So with Marsha's blessing, Dr. Helen Chapel and I founded the International Patient Organization for Primary Immunodeficiencies, or as it is better known, IPOPI. Today, of course, IDF is well established and a major success. IPOPI is now uh, represented in almost 60 countries around the world. But did you ever wonder, wonder if Marcia didn't have her idea? Think about it. There would be no IDF there would be no IPOPI. Circumstances facing the PI community would be vastly different today. I shudder to think what they would be. Your guess is as good as mine. But thanks to Marcia and her idea, and with the help of hundreds maybe a couple of thousand over the decades of dedicated, hardworking volunteers throughout the United States and the world, some of whom are here tonight, the PID patient landscape has changed forever. The PI landscape, patient landscape has changed forever. And it all started with an idea. Marcia, it's been a remarkable journey and achievement. 
and it is an incredible legacy that you leave to the world. Congratulations, you've earned it. I'd like to end on a personal note. Two and a half years ago, our son was fighting, Mike, was fighting for his life in a San Diego hospital. During that time, Marcia frequently expressed her interest, her caring, and her love. Marcia, Sarah, and I will never forget it. So I am here to help out a, a dear member of the IDF community, Kathy Antela, the Vice President of Education and Volunteers at IDF. I think they know who you are. <laughs> Kathy wanted to make some remarks about Marsha, but she has lost her voice. It is toast. So, Kathy is a mom of a child with PI and started in the IDF community as a volunteer, then became a board member, and is now a dedicated staff member. So, she's written some comments, and I will read them for her. You're welcome. Look at you. Never give in. Never give in. Never, 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 never in nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Winston Churchill. <laughs> Winston Churchill said these words in a speech on October 29th. 1941, when he visited Harrow School, his alma mater. Marsha has never given up on the Immune Deficiency Foundation or individuals living with PI and their family members. Organizations come and go, but Marsha has been a consistent driving force in this community. She built this organization from her kitchen table, and today it is world renowned. In any country, the PI community knows IDF and very specifically, they know Marsha. So it's important to understand her role in IDF, not just as the founder, but as the leader who returned to save IDF in 2005. IDF would not be here today if it were not for Marsha coming back to it. She sacrificed personally and professionally to return to IDF. She had a nice career at Johns Hopkins, and she gave that up to rescue this organization. Marcia is many things, but she is certainly not self-serving. She does this not only because she cares for her son, but because she cares for every person living with a primary immunodeficiency. Every child, every teen, every single adult. She cares about everyone affected by these diseases. Diseases that we all know do not go away. And she understands that if IDF isn't advocating for people with primary immunodeficiency, who will? Her legacy of never giving up on this community and never taking no for an answer will continue for years to come. So on behalf of all of us in the PI community, but specifically thank you from Kathy, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for having a vision and for never, 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 ever giving up. I knew Marcia before IDF was ever formed. I met her at a meeting at the National Institute of Health where we both were attending a meeting, and she told me about her vision for the foundation. Marcia said that she was starting this from her kitchen table. I thought that was very admirable of her to do that, and I knew that she had a son who had one of these diseases. I strongly encouraged her to pursue that because having patients that I was treating myself with these conditions, I knew that they needed to have an organization where they could talk with other people who had the same conditions. An organization that would bring them, because, uh, bring them help because it's difficult to find help for rare diseases. Of course, back then we didn't even know what the cause of any of these diseases was. We, could only had, we only had the clinical features to go on, 
and we knew how to treat these clinical features. But public support for this was hard to find. It was very difficult to find insurance coverage for these patients because the insurers didn't understand them at all. So when I diagnose a new patient, I always give them the URL for the primaryimmune.org. <clears throat> I told them that they can think of the IDF as a community, and I tell them that they can find information about the condition, that it will be their home because they can call the 800 number and ask any number of questions that they want to ask. And finally, that they can go to the national meeting and there they're going to meet a lot of other people with primary immune deficiency. <clears throat> the national meetings are very special because that's where they meet other people with the same diseases they have. Now, Marcia is an amazing woman. She had a vision and she followed the vision. She is very persistent and she used that persistence to accomplish her ultimate goals. She's been able to recruit people who have special talents that help us help to improve the overall function of the organization, as well as the running of the organization. Marcia is the face of primary immunodeficiency when she goes to national and international meetings. She has also fostered the development of other smaller organizations, such as the SCID group, the Wiscott Aldrich group, and the CGD group. Hopefully all of these will continue to be under the umbrella of the Immune Deficiency Foundation and <clears throat> that they will have as much success as the IDF has had. Congratulations, Marcia, for incredible accomplishments. Today, you have heard the history of the Immune Deficiency Foundation and how it began at a small kitchen table, armed with only a good education, perseverance, devotion from husband John, and love for a son, Johnny, who had just been diagnosed with something called primary immunodeficiency. And realizing there was no patient organization to offer the emotional support her family so desperately needed. And so it began. Tonight, I bow my head and I speak of our hero. I believe heroes are a blessing from the Almighty sent to us as models of earthly adversities that can be overcome, and we are charged with paying close attention to such inspirations. We must know, too, that all heroes are not just those who have performed some deed. A hero must first have formed an attitude. It is from our attitudes, our beliefs, that we form deeds, and from deeds we form habits from habits grow character. And on our character, we build our destiny and affect the destiny of others. And so tonight, we pay tribute to our hero, Marsha Boyle. We gather here to thank you, Marsha, for sharing your character, your spirit with us, for functioning at a high level, no matter the difficulties for never taking no as the final answer, for beaming your dedication, devotion, and knowledge outwards and giving us a target to beam back, for being patient, understanding, and steadfast with everything that comes your way, for giving us hope when we thought there wasn't any. You and the IDF staff help to provide tools that we may seek education the right treatment, and ease our fears of the unknown, and so much more. You have given us a voice in Washington that we may loudly declare, we are here and we will be heard. You have given me purpose when I thought a life of sorrow was all I had to look forward to. You have made it possible for, to meet, for me to meet so many outstanding and inspiring families, and you and I watched as they shared with each other quiet time together, exchanging information, email addresses, and laughter, personal conversations, and perhaps found solutions to some of their issues. As we know, emotional support is the primary goal of IDF. 
I think you all join me in appreciating the tremendous importance IDF has had in all of our lives. Over the past 37 years, IDF has educated thousands of patients, families, and physicians. It has improved patient care, and through the efforts of many, beginning with IDF, we now have SCID, newborn screening, in 44 states. We know that children will be diagnosed early, have access to the best medical care possible, and families will receive guidance and support they need. And, as important, research will continue to improve the treatment of all primary immune disorders. Marcia, we wish you well as you retire, but not completely, I suspect. And now, you and John will seek new adventures with safe and happy travels and know that you have touched many lives in more ways than you can imagine. Thank you, Marcia, for sharing yourself with us and know because of your high standards and the guidelines you have set forth, the Immune Deficiency Foundation will carry on. You have made so many dreams come true. God bless you and John and thank you both so very much. usually to thank other people. Um, I thank all of you. I, I, I thank Dr. Buckley, Carol Ann, Kathy, Bob. I can't express how overwhelmed I am to be here with all of you. I've got to get through this, so uh, thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to be recognized by some of the people who mean the most to me and to see how strong our zebra community has become. To echo the theme of this year's conference, this is a remarkable community in action. Please give yourselves a round of applause. In a couple of months, I will finish my work as president of IDF and return to my original role within this organization, that of a volunteer. So I've been thinking a lot lately about the moment nearly 40 years ago when my husband John and I began this journey. It was May of 1978, we had just returned home from a trip to Atlanta when our infant son Johnny developed a cough. The cough quickly got worse and after an awful night hovering over him, we brought him to the pediatrician. His doctor ordered us to go straight to the emergency room at Johns Hopkins Hospital. Before we knew it, we were rushing toward an unfamiliar city. We had just moved to Maryland and hadn't visited Baltimore yet. We were trying to find our way downtown. Remember, this is 1978. There's no GPS to guide us. And we found ourselves in a turn-only lane when we wanted to go straight. We were trying to figure out how to get out of the right lane when, a, of course, a police officer pulled us over. While sitting in the back of the car with my son, I promptly burst into tears. The officer taking pity on my poor husband, uh, who now had a sick infant and a weeping wife in his car, offered to give us a police escort to the emergency room. What I remember most from that day and from the weeks that followed was how lonely it felt as we navigated our son's illness and diagnosis and how much our lives had changed. Over time, my husband and I wanted to do something that could make our son's life better. But through research, I found there was no organization we could join, no educational materials for patients and families. So remember back then, there was no Google, no WebMD, and definitely no IDF. In 1980, I began talking with Johnny's immunologist, Dr. Jerry Winkelstein, 
about how we could start an organization for people like my son. The goal was to create a national organization that would provide information and support to patients and their families, to advocate for these diseases, and to improve treatment and outcomes. To be honest, John and I didn't really know what we were doing when we first started. I was a librarian, and he was a college professor. But we plunged in and tried to figure it out. We found others who agreed that a national patient organization for PI was important and joined the effort. We got advice from the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. We won our first grant from the American Legion Child Welfare Foundation. And we used that money to fund and develop our first brochures and newsletters we were very proud of. We created a medical advisory committee with Dr. Jerry Winkelstein as its first chair. We developed a fellowship program with a grant from Cutter Laboratories. And with support from Baxter, created our first patient and family handbook in the late 1980s. I did much of this work around the kitchen table and later from a small office with a part-time assistant. And so when I look at what IDF has achieved since then, I couldn't be prouder of our accomplishments. This organization has achieved more than I could have imagined all those years ago. So now when I imagine a couple rushing off to the hospital with a sick child, and com I'm comforted by the fact that that family will not be alone in their diagnosis. Or when an adult who has been ill for many years finally receives a diagnosis of CVID or another PI and knows that they were not wrong in their quest for better health. They will have the resources that we built over time, from our patient and family handbook to our resources for children, our education meetings and peer support, to our advocacy. And most importantly, they will have you. As I look out over this crowd, I'm inspired to see how you support each other. Look around at this amazing network of family and friends. These are the people who understand so well what it means to live with a primary immunodeficiency. The people who know the mundane routines of infusion and the struggles of chronic illness. The people who know how frustrating it can be to sit on the phone for hours with insurance companies. These are the people who get it this big, beautiful community of Zebras. It gives me great comfort to know that this community exists, to know that in the future, people will never feel as alone as John and I did when confronted with our son's diagnosis. Happily, this is a time when many exciting advances are happening in this field. Improved diagnostics and treatments, better understanding of the genetic basis of PI, and individualized therapies improve bone marrow transplantation, gene therapy, and the hope of gene editing. And yet I also feel concern over the future. I don't have to tell you that access to quality, affordable health care remains challenging. Insurance seems to grow more complicated and costly with each passing year. The recent actions by Congress threaten people with pre-existing conditions, and those fall between the track, cracks in terms of affordable insurance. This is a major step backwards. I remember Dr. Jerry Winkelstein saying, imagine if the day comes when society decides that treating diseases like these, diseases that cost the system money, is not important. I think often of the saying that a society is judged by how it treats its most vulnerable. We are here to make sure that our community is not forgotten, that we are prioritized for our life-saving therapies and quality health care that we receive the benefits of gene therapy and other innovations, that our clinicians, insurers, and legislators understand that one-size-fit-all solutions are inadequate. IDF is here to serve you, whether that means going to Capitol Hill or fighting back when your insurer denies you the therapies you need. Every day, IDF staffers come to work with a singular goal, to help you live the healthiest, most fulfilling life you can. But we can't do this work alone. We need you and the rest of the PI community to make sure that IDF is around for the next generation of patients and families. Now, one of the ways you can do this is through your financial support of IDF. You didn't think I could get this through this without saying that. <laughs> so I do urge you to uh, find ways to support us. So please consider this my official ask. Your gifts to IDF really do matter and are truly appreciated.
And of course, there are many other ways to support our work. My real ask is that you look at what needs to be done and together help us with our next challenges. The IDF is your organization and none of us should ever take it for granted. Take part in our walks and get your friends to join in. Organize a Get Connected group with other PI patients. Become a health access advocate and help us with legislative issues. Offer peer support to others in their journey. Our volunteers have done incredible work in these and so many other areas. And I'd like to take a moment to recognize all of you who have done so much for IDF over the years. Would you please rise so that we can give you the round of applause that you deserve. Come on, our volunteers. Come on, volunteers. Got to stand up. In addition to our remarkable volunteers, there are so many others who have made IDF what it is today. I'm truly grateful for the partnership and support of the companies that make the life-saving therapies and services needed by our community. I'd like to ask the dedicated people who rep represent the industry partners to stand and be recognized. We wouldn't be here without you. I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge the hardworking and talent members of our professional staff. I miss working with you on a daily basis, but I know I leave IDF in good hands. It's absolutely impossible to recognize everyone who made a difference along the way. Yet I'd be remiss if I didn't highlight a few special people. Of course, Dr. Jerry Winkelstein and Dr. Rebecca Buckley, the first and second chairs of our Medical Advisory Committee. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Kate Sullivan, our Vice Chair. The members of our Medical Advisory Committee and Nurse Advisory Committee and all the medical professionals who give their precious time and expertise for our community. The amazing members of the IDF Board of Trustees. John Seymour, our Chair. Steve Fitek, our Vice Chair, who was brought to us long ago by longtime volunteer Sonia Vonout. Barb Ballard, who we were thinking about and who's present at this conference we miss. My dear friend Carol Ann DeMerritt, who is an inspiration to us all. And of course, Joel Buckberg, Terry Halper, Chuck Lahey, Rich Lowe, Brian Rath, Yvette Shorten, John Smith, and his amazing wife Heather, and Amy Walsh. And a special acknowledgement to Bob and Sarah Labine. Bob joined the kitchen table in the early 1980s and has provided his wisdom ever since. I also want to remember a former member of our Board of Trustees, Mary Hurley, who sadly passed away last month and who gave so much to the CGD community. We give our condolences to Alan and Stephen Hurley. And IDF would not exist without the support and involvement of my wonderful husband, John, who has given so much, is co-chair, I'm not just chair, and never missed an in-person board meeting in 37 years. <laughs> and our inspiration for starting IDF, our son, John Gordon Boyle, who makes me proud every day. IDF could not have a more ardent advocate. When I think about all these people, and I look out at you who joined us here tonight, including my sisters, Wendy and Cindy, who are staples at the, ID, at the LA Walk, my wonderful daughter-in-law, Tara, and my adorable grandson, Johnny, who's kind of falling asleep there, 
who always makes me smile. I think back on the day when we were driving through Baltimore, confused and scared about what the future would hold. The chapter that began so long ago with fear and uncertainty is ending with joy and pride. It is one of the great satisfactions of my life to know that we have built something that's truly useful, indeed vital, for our community. And now as I prepare to pass the baton and resume my original role as a volunteer with IDF, it's up to all of you to ensure that this Zebra community remains strong. You are not alone. You are a strong, resourceful, and tremendously dedicated group of people. And together, you can achieve great things. I'm so thankful to be part of this remarkable group and to know that you'll continue the work that we've started. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. I'd like to bring the second occupant of that vehicle that night up to the stage and ask uh, Dr. John Boyle to come up and join Marcia, if you would. There is no way that a gift or a few words can summarize uh, what this community uh, owes to Marcia and the Boyle family, but we're going to make our best effort and say that on the behalf of the Board of Trustees, I present the award and the necklace to Marcia Boyle on the occasion of her retirement in recognition of her groundbreaking leadership, tireless advocacy and all the things that she has done for the primary immunodeficiency community. So, Marcia, that's, we, that's why we need John, so that we can... Oh, oh, I knew there was a reason. <laughs> <laughs> this is absolutely gorgeous. Although, although this is the heavy one. Got your attention? <laughs> it took your a physician's hands to do it. <laughs> this could take a while. <laughs> we are ahead of schedule, okay? <laughs> of the program. Yes. I promise I'm not going to ask the tech people to bring their duct tape up here, okay? <laughs> Hold off. Thank <laughs> you. 